Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Wikibon.com, joined for this segment, a kickoff of our, our uh, we call it the white stage. We've got two sets going mm -hmm. uh, side by side is uh, Steve Chambers, newest member of the Wikibon community. Yeah. Steve, thank you for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, so this is a great show, great start today. Explosions in the main auditorium. New CEO for Cisco, rubbing drama from the right, very start. Right? Yeah, Steve, absolutely. Disruption everywhere, <laughs> cats and dogs living together. Um, you know, always excitement here. You know, EMC World really, I, I could say, it's the largest storage conference, yeah. you know, in the industry. You know, a question we have is, you know, where does it stack when you talk about cloud? Uh, and, you know, a lot of talk this morning about the, uh, you know, EMC Federation Hybrid Cloud is Enterprise Federation Hybrid Cloud. It's like yeah. uh, trying to get the name down sometimes. I know. It seems like VMware and EMC get yeah. these names that don't roll <laughs> off the tongue. It's like, you know, vCloud Hybrid Service and turned into vCloud Air, and now, it, it, if I remember right, it's the you know, Enterprise Hybrid Cloud, or EHC, they call it. So, how did yeah. they do on the keynote this morning, Steve? So, I mean, it was good to see that right up front. Uh, and they started talking about software and applications and workloads, which is exactly the right way to come from it, right? Um, but it is complex, we know that, right? So, you know, you know my background, I've built these things, solved these things, I've seen people build them, they're really hard to do. And so I think, you know, what, what really resonates with me when I look at the Federation story is they've got the identity, they've got all the infrastructure underneath it, they've got the pivotal piece, and I think this year that's going to be a real game changer. I mean, we've seen, uh, you know, the difference that, you know, you've got Mesosphere, we've got VMware talking about containers, Microsoft are talking about it, Google, you know, I think the pivotal piece is is going to be a real game changer for them this year. Yeah, yeah, Steve, you brought up good things. They talk about the DevOps mm. and, and you know modern applications, which I give you kudos. No containers in this morning's conversation this morning. That's true. I do expect it to come up. I heard I think Chad Sackage is actually giving uh, a session where he's talking about containers and how that fits in. So you know, didn't check all the buzzwords, but no. it's a long show. I think that's a Wednesday thing, isn't it, with Chad? I think we'll definitely hear a, a bit more about containers then. Um, you know, just a quick mention as well. Yesterday, so the the pre day. I thought that was outstanding yesterday. So it, it was all about DevOps. Yeah, it was actually, so it's, it's a new group that EMC That's has right, called yeah. EMC Code. Um, they brought in a bunch of speakers, most of them not EMC. Uh, people like Nick Weaver from Intel. Right. Uh, they had Chef on, they had Pivotal on, of course, from the yep. Federation. We had, uh, a couple we had, pu we had Puppet Labs, uh, we had a guy from Dropbox. Uh, and, and I think those two um, were outstanding. They, they changed my thinking on quite a few things. The Dropbox guy, um, you know, we know APIs are important in the cloud. They're important for consumption reasons, not just gluing infrastructure together. But he explained, the, you know, the, the complexities of linking to uh, users with clients and servers. That was a really good session. The puppet guy was really good. Um, it was very Gene Kim esque, I would say. Uh, and I know Jez Humble is around this week, so you know, I hope we get some time with him. Um, but they were really good. But I think the best session yesterday for me was the two EMC guys. You know, I don't think people realize how much IT EMC have got. Right, you know, we're talking you, tens you, thousand. IP, you're saying, or? Uh, in the IT within EMC okay. as a company. So yeah, you know, yeah. we're talking tens of thousands of nodes that they've yeah. got, and a lot of storage. I think people forget that. I know it's one of the things that the EMC CIO does a good job with customers and goes and shares his yeah, stories. Well, well, right. Steve, actually, I just interviewed Vic Bagot, who's the CIO of EMC. So we heard job. a lot about <laughs> this. Um, really talked about how you know it's no longer those two. ERPs, no. you know, he said, you know, give me, t you know, ten million dollars in twenty-four months, and I can build you a beautiful Taj Mahal. Today, it's yeah. about being faster, and I think meeting it's a great your business way. needs, um, and that's challenging. So we went from yesterday, where you hung out with, I think it was what, three, four hundred people, and a yep. lot of hoodies, and yep. now here we are, you know, EMC world, it's much more corporate polos, and uh, you know, we've yep. got a few suits here. Heck, we're interviewing Mike Olson from Platter right now, and he's wearing a tie. I was like, you know, Mike Olson, you know, usually I expect to see yep. him more in sweats. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see that blur between kind of the enterprise and the cloud, and some yeah. of the cloud guys are getting a little more formal, some of the enterprise guys are wearing jeans a little bit more. Um, so, well, I know it's this at the, um, at the uh, previous, at the Amazon Web Summit, right, with those guys. There are a lot more suits there. I think today there is a real mix of people here. Uh, I thought the keynote today was a real mix of, which represents the portfolio, right, that EMC you've got. Um, but what I'm really looking forward to this week is seeing how um, you know, yesterday we were talking about applications and workloads, but we were talking about them in detail, not as a black box, because I think we often do that, right? As infrastructure guys will say, 
Yeah, it's all about the tier two workload and then just quickly move on. But yesterday it was going into a lot more detail and depth, which I thought was really good. But the two EMC guys that stood up and they said, hey, you know, we thought we'd get into this infrastructure as code piece. I'm looking forward to seeing more of that this week. But we didn't realize how hard it is. And they actually went through the list of things. I tweeted about it yesterday, what was difficult, what was easy. Um, and as they went through, you know, they really held their hands up. And to see EMC guys talking as developers, that was really good. All right. Uh, yeah, Steve, I mean, we're, we're going to talk to a lot of practitioners, like yeah. to understand their businesses. Um, you've been here as a customer of EMC. Yeah, yeah. You've been part of a couple of the Federation businesses, both, yeah. you know, VMware and VCE, who are just now back inside EMC. You know, what, what's your early impression as an analyst now? Uh, you know, that prism, I mean, it's definitely, you know, they start off with the executives, they're giving us a ton of information, we can get good access. You know, what's your take so far? I think what they're doing right now is what we've been shouting at EMC to do for some time, right? They've always had this promise. They said in the keynote this morning that uh, this is a long-term plan, and I think we're starting to see it come to fruition, which is really important. What, what, what specifically? Specifically, I think, you know, the, the bits that weren't talked about much today, but I think we'll hear a lot more tomorrow and Wednesday, is around the security piece. We know that's big this year, right? And it's around the, diff the move of the intelligence into the platform layer. And I think, yeah. We've had PaaS for some years. We know Microsoft went into it, then they kind of changed their mind and did the infrastructure stuff. Um, but I think that platform piece is going to be really important because it's going to pull through. You know, that's where people are going to run their software as a service applications. They're going to develop on it. New software is going to go there and it's going to pull through all the other goodness that EMC have got. So I think that's a key part. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you, you wrote an interesting article on wikibon.com talking about, oftentimes we talk about, you know, application centric. We're really still talking about infrastructure. We're not going up the stack. EMC has been talking about this third platform now for yeah. a couple of years, and I actually felt that there was a lot more discussion about the apps and the data, uh, talking about the analytics, well, talking about yeah. things like the, the centers and IoT, if you will. I don't feel we're still quite there, though. Do you know? No. I think the platform two and a half, um, that's kind of grated on me a little bit, you know. But I think it's I think it's accurate. I think we're definitely getting there. But it, you're right. It's still a little bit tier two apps, back box. All right, so, uh, you know, w w one last bit of news this morning that I want to make sure we cover. Um, you know, talk about, you know, the Federation. Joe Tucci's going to be on stage tomorrow with uh, Paul Moritz and Pat Gelsinger, uh, one of Joe's old friends, John Chambers, after 20 years as the chairman and CEO of Cisco, is now just no longer going to be CEO. He's just going to be the, 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 the chairman there. Uh, so, you know, Steve, you worked at Cisco for a number of years. What, what's your reaction? What's the legacy uh, that, that Chambers leaves behind? and, and what, what's, what's it look like for Cisco? You know, Cisco is one of those companies where when you work there, it leaves a very positive impression on you. Um, very good people, very good products, very successful business. Um, I joined there when they were just getting into the, the server market. Everyone said they were crazy, but I think they've been proved correct in that. Um, and that was a sign they were doing something a little bit different. Um, I mean, the news this morning, we kind of expected it, but maybe not expected, uh, you know, Chuck to get the role. Uh, that, that, was a, that was a bit of a surprise for me. I mean, congratulations on him. I think he's got a great project ahead of him because with Cisco, I don't know, are they, are they, is this a steady hand on the tiller or is this someone that's going to change the sail and he's going to tack and jive Cisco into new waters? I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I, I want to see some dynam dynamism from Cisco and not just steady as she goes. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, is Cisco to Cisco intercloud, is that something that, you know, we're going to be talking about? Will that be a big driver? You know, will this new CEO do what Satya has done on the Microsoft side? So, you know, what, what, what's your take? How is Cisco doing on cloud? Um, well, I know, you know, the intercloud fabric, um, I've, I've been taken through the software by Cisco. Um, you know, it looks great. From an infrastructure point of view, it looks great. Uh, I mean, you look at the size of Cisco's service provider business, they've got enormous reach around the world. So I think out of all the companies that could make something like Intercloud work, Cisco could. I'm just not sure, is it the right thing? Is it just yet another infrastructure play? Or are they really listening to guys like the MIT guys we worked on, the second machine age and the platform play? Uh, you know, you watch, you watch players who are encouraging people to build businesses on them, like the Dropbox guy. He explained their platform model. It sounded great. He said people are making lots of money with us. Yeah, um, and, yeah. And, and last, uh, an interesting note, tie back, uh, yeah. so it's Chuck Robbins, the new CEO. Uh, I happened to bump into some of the VCE people and I said, so first of all, aren't you glad that you're back in EMC before yeah. this move happened? And they said, yeah, but an interesting note, they actually have a really strong relation with Chuck Robbins. Uh, my understanding that he is actually one of the key executives 
um, that is working with them. So, you know, many people say, oh, now that VZE is back inside of EMC, that Cisco wants nothing to do with it. Um, but that. There, there, nothing could be farther no, from the truth. We that. know that Cisco wants to drive revenue. They need course, growth yeah. engines, and companies like EMC and NetApp are driving a ton of UCS sales. So Cisco is a diamond sponsor here at this event. Yep. Uh, there will be a big presence here. I know we're going to be interviewing a, a, a couple of them this week. So I think it's yeah. just a little bit of mischief, right? I mean, I, I've been hearing that when I worked at VCE. Oh, you know, people don't get on, and nothing's further than the truth, right? I mean, it, it, it was such a compelling proposition for customers. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of that, right? And I'm pretty sure it's just Yeah, I, I mean, Steve, the, the only thing that drives, you know, click rates more than wars is if there's M&A going on. So, <laughs> you know, true, yeah. going back and forth, it's like, oh, wait, are Cisco and EMC just going to merge? You know, 15 years ago, we were having that discussion. Yeah. Um, there, there's some interesting acquisition targets, mm. uh, despite what might have happened with, you know, HP and EMC feeling out the waters, you know, a year or so ago. Um, you know, EMC, you know, we're going to see how they're doing this week, but, yeah, you know, going strong. I uh, don't, don't think they're an acquisition target. They are an acquirer. They usually spend over a billion dollars a year in yeah. those acquisitions. So uh, yeah, I want to give you the final, yeah, any comments on that or yeah, give you the well, final word on what you want to I just to think with, with the Cisco thing, I, I guess what I hope for, for all my friends who still work at Cisco is that um, this is going to give them a, a new, lease, new lease of life, right? Uh, change can be good or it can be bad. Um, I think it'll be good. They still have some great executives there. I mean, Rob, Rob's there, Gary, they're still great executives. And they've got a great portfolio. I just... I just sometimes feel they don't move. I mean, they're a big company, right? And some, you just want these companies to move fast. I've been saying that about AMC for years, and it feels like they're actually getting their nails off. Yeah, it is tough for the 800-pound gorilla to dance. It is, very So, much you know, we, we, we know that out there, uh, you know, things move. So, all right, Steve, uh, really excited to be having you co-host on this event. Wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage, two sets here at EMC World in Las Vegas. Uh, we're going to dive right into it, so please stay with, with, with us. SiliconAngle.tv for the live stream. Wikibon.com. Uh, hit Steve and myself and the whole team up on Twitter with any questions you have, and we'll be right back after this break. Hi, I'm Andrew Kreitzer, a Business Operations Manager at LinkedIn, and you're watching theCUBE. I'm Chris Sellen, VP of Business Development for HP 